we'll go. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You hear me? Yes. Perfect. Then I can start. Uh, very good. My name is Patri Patrick Lind, and I'm head of the product line infrastructure as a service and platform as a service at Ericsson. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Ericsson is, I will start with three quick facts. Uh, Ericsson is the fifth largest software vendor in the world. That means that software is extremely important for us, both uh, the software in itself, but also the platform it is running upon. The second fact, Ericsson is the world leader in mobile infrastructure. We have over 40% market share of the mobile infrastructure in the world. And this is then deployed in 180 countries all around the world. So this is then a huge network of interworking uh, nodes that is delivering a service 24 by 7 that is mission critical. The third fact, we are, as Ericsson, extremely committed to cloud. We have, uh, a little bit less than a year ago, uh, established a business unit that's called Cloud and IP. That's one of our four businesses within Ericsson. So cloud is important, and OpenStack is also very important. Uh, a few years back, we took a decision that we would be building infrastructure based on OpenStack, as well as making our applications run on an OpenStack infrastructure. We also became gold member uh, within the OpenStack community a little bit more than two years ago. So this is, of course, a very important for, you, for this event. For it. So over to you, Derek. Hi, I'm uh, Derek Collison. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called AppSera, based out of San Francisco. And we deliver a trusted hybrid cloud operating system, which will allow you to expand your investment in OpenStack seamlessly to Amazon, Google, IBM Software, and Azure. Very good. So then I will tell you, why is this important for Ericsson? Then? Uh, first, I will give you a market scenario. I mean, we hear so much uh, during this conference about DevOps. I mean, the speed, the automation. But then also, of course, you need to manage that with the compliance. You need to manage the speed with the risk. And if you're combining these two things with the third important thing, to getting this totally elastic, working in a hybrid or a multi-cloud concept, then you have uh, captured what we think are three very important market scenarios here. And in order to be able to do this, we think that a hybrid cloud OS is the future. Because what we're seeing here is that OpenStack will be very important, but it will be one of the clouds. And it's extremely important that that one can work together with all other clouds. I will now do one example of a market scenario or a market opportunity that we are seeing uh, that is relevant for us because it's then addressing our main customer segments, the telecom operators. The telecom operators, they see as a great opportunity to be able to provide cloud services to their customers, the enterprises. They want to have the possibility to provide a solution where you can deploy, orchestrate, and govern diverse workloads across the clouds. And that can be anything from the enterprise on-premise cloud or the operators own cloud that they have built to provide the cloud services from their, uh, from their data center, or it can be within a public cloud context. And it's important here that you have a hybrid cloud OS to create the flexibility to use uh, the resources where you want and need them. Something that you might not know, but that is uh, based from the experience of working with 180 countries like Ericsson is doing, is that data sovereignty is going to become very important in a scenario like this. Because in many countries, you have the uh, need to guarantee that the data is sta staying inside the country border. And you have legislation saying that, and you also need to have a trusted uh, provider. In this case, the telecom operators, our main customers, are extremely equipped to, to provide this. So they can then provide this solution to, towards the enterprises, where they both provide the possibility to use their existing cloud, the cloud that the operators has built inside the country, or a public cloud. And that's why we're so excited working together with Absera, because we think that they, through the hybrid cloud OS, and the possibility through policy and governance, control where the data and the applications are, have the perfect solution. So that's why 
we want to work with you guys. And now we're turning over to the more exciting things. What are you guys doing? So um, we're going to give a little bit of a demo. Um, for those that saw the keynote this morning, you know hybrid, true hybrid is hard. It's hard to kind of get right. Uh, we were founded about three years ago trying to solve this problem. And there's a lot of very, very hard problems to solve to make this totally transparent and seamless to our users and our customers. And so as you can see here, we tie together private clouds, OpenStack, vSphere, bare metal to anybody that's in our public cloud ecosystem, which today is Amazon, Google, IBM Software, and we're going to add Azure by the end of the year. And so this is immediately available to all of our customers, and we're going to show you kind of what that looks like. And again, we saw this morning it's hard to actually do this. Uh, it's not a weekend project to get it to, to run correctly, but we're going to show you what we have. And so this is our operator dashboard. It's the cluster. And so Josh is going to scroll down a little bit. And right now, at the very top, that donut is Mirantis Express. This morning, we announced a partnership with Mirantis, a close partnership of delivering uh, AppSera's H cost directly on top of Mirantis. But as he's scrolling, you also see that every single region in Amazon is also represented, as well as every single region in Google. And so this cluster that's set up, it's running off of uh, or being accessed through Josh's laptop, but is being housed in both Mirantis Express and in AWS and Google is what we're going to do and target some workloads. So Josh is going to deploy a um, simple application. Uh, there's not a lot of rocket science to, the, to this web application. It's a to-do app. And it kind of comes up and says, oh, these are all of the things that we are going to governed by policy for you, whether from the developer standpoint or from compliance, ops, net ops, sec ops within your organization. So the system is cranking this thing up. He put what's called a hard tag, meaning he has via policy the ability to hard tag something to say, I want this to run in AWS. So even our distributed scheduling algorithm, which is again overlaid over top of all these different cloud providers, is policy aware. And so now we have a to-do app, which is not very exciting. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't even have persistence at this point. So now what Josh is going to do is he's going to say, OK, we'll bind the app and give it a Postgres database. And again, this is all happening in AWS. So now the app will get restarted. It binds to the database, which is being backed by RDS. So it's being exposed into the platform, but it's actually an RDS database, right? So now when he goes back and he adds some to-do list items, they will stick, right? You, they'll actually be stored. And so as he's refreshing and it's there. So again, he, all he did was he said, I want this application to run. And by the way, this can be a Docker image, which we natively support. It can be all different types of workloads. But now what he's going to show is what happens if we don't want the developer, developer to be able to do these types of things. And so we're going to go back to the console and show the policy system. And these policy systems actually hopefully read similar to like English, which says, if you're deploying a job into uh, this namespace, the tag should be OpenStack now. So essentially, let's say I'm playing the role of compliance operator and saying, hey, we want these things to run on-premise in OpenStack. Now, when he says apply this, it says, we know that this is out of policy, that it's not compliant anymore. So he's actually going to go ahead and resolve that and restart the application. Now, what's really interesting that's happening here is, is that the application is going to be restarted. The scheduling algorithm is policy aware, so it knows it has to deploy it on OpenStack now. We have a full mesh network that's being rerouted and rewired on the fly, both from layer 7, how his browser finds the app, and how the application finds the database, which is still in Amazon. That The database hasn't moved, right? Now, of course, speed of light problems, you might not want to do that. But for what we're trying to show you, we think it's really um, you know, important to understand that policy and enforcement and the network fabric all being rewired across a true hybrid cloud like this, uh, is we think it was a key to driving value and extension for OpenStack investments. So is it up? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It took us three years, but I promise you it'll work every single time. And so this application is being routed through layer 7 from the browser to an app in OpenStack running on Mirantis that's connected seamlessly and securely to a database inside of Amazon. So we have one more other app we want to show you. Um, this is an application that 
uh, displays a map, and all it's showing is, is that whenever he hits refresh, it's showing who, which workload actually responded and where it's actually located. Now remember when we started out, we showed you the, the um, cluster in totality of every region in Amazon, every region in Google, and of course, OpenStack Mirantis. And so now I'm going to ask um, Josh, go ahead and update this thing and scale it up to 50 instances. I think it's supposed to be Matt. And so now what he's doing is he's simply saying without any policy attached, which we just had on that to-do app, saying you have to run an OpenStack, we're saying do whatever you want with a true hybrid cloud operating system. And so 50 instances are being scheduled anywhere they need to be that are best suited for what they're trying to do. So now as he starts refreshing, we should start to see this thing start to ping pong. So now all of a sudden that one's being answered from in Japan, running on Amazon. That one's from Google in San Jose. That one, I don't know which one it is, but it's up in here. I know, it's, I know where it is geographically, I don't know what provider. Um, so hopefully you guys have an, a, a sense of what true hybrid actually looks like, where you can take your OpenStack investment and seamlessly and transparently extend it to any public cloud provider with compliance, security, trust, which are usually bad words. So thank you. And we're happy to take any questions. I think we've got a few minutes, correct? Yeah. Any questions? I promise you it's real. You can, you can see it. it. It really does work. Yes? So the question is, uh, what kind of APIs do you have and how hard is it to port to um, different cloud OSs, is that correct? So the way uh, AppSera's HCOS is put together is there's a routing plane, which is how things are finding each other. There's a management plane. And then there's something called an isolation context, which doesn't mean anything except for the fact that it's the notion of container management and the network stack. We have to control both to enforce policy. And it's a big deal that if policy says, hey, you shouldn't do that, but you still can easily do that, that's not trustworthy. So to your point exactly, that runtime piece, which is the smallest, easily, most portable piece, that's all we have to port to the different cloud OSs. Any other questions? Yes? So the question is, do you have a full-fledged API that's written on top of that? And you actually also asked that. So yeah, so it's RESTful, JSON payloads, open. Um, you can see a lot of it through our documentation, which is public. Um, and we've already had several partners extend, you know, for example, our console and our, and our tooling to do this. The biggest thing is, is that getting a workload onto a system and then orchestrating those should be as friction-free as possible. So we don't want that to be overly, you know, uh, on top of, of what the developer's trying to do. Um, so it, it could be that we just present the developer with operating systems that automatically have service access points and connect connectivity to databases set up no matter where you, you go. But the API is open. It's HTTP, JSON. It's open source. You can extend it. Any other questions? Yes. So the question is, how hard is it to add a new service? Uh, and I'm sure that the people here through either OpenStack or other um, potential platform as a service providers, it's always the, the notion that you can't actually connect anything unless you actually have it integrated in. Um, with our system, if you have an IP address, you can natively connect directly from our system to anything that has an IP and a port. Step number two is if you want us to actually present it in a different way uh, through what we call a service gateway. They're trivial to write. We have open source ones. You can copy, paste, do whatever you want. And then the last piece is um, a little bit on the, on the geek side, but the power of these systems, in my opinion, not our system, but what you guys as customers run on top of it, it's not only about how the system actually connects and forms an ontology, but it's how the systems are actually talking. And one of the kind of hidden gems in this, this hybrid cloud operating system is we're actually semantically aware of those. And we actually present a policy-driven interface 
to actually be notified and control those communications, totally transparent. So we won't show it here, but the demo that he just did, our, we call them semantic pipeline technology, is actually in between the to-do app and the database. And if you wanted to, we could actually say, we want to be notified anyone, anytime someone does a delete or an insert. Moreover, we can actually say, we actually want to disallow it for like the next hour, or we want a custom piece of code to process this and decide what to do with it. So um, that's usually step three, and that's the hardest to do. But we have a generic framework, and you plug in the protocol engine and such. Any other questions? We'll stick around for a while. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.